Hello world, I'm Colleen and welcome to my Glamorous Life Kitchen Edition. This is part two of our pumpkin pie episode and my sound isn't working. So in the bowl in front of me, there are two cups of all-purpose unbleached flour, three quarters of a cup of butter flavored Crisco and a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just using my hands to kind of mix that together. You can use a pastry cutter, but I prefer using my hands because I can get a better feel for where the dough is at and how much mixing it's going to need. size crumb which is really good. Now I have some ice water. It usually takes about two to three tablespoons of water. This is a half tablespoon measure that I'm using which makes it really convenient. So I'm going to start off with I believe two tablespoons, maybe two and a half. I think it was two and a half. Yes, yeah, two and a half tablespoons of water just to start mixing that in. I'm going to kind of gently swirl the flour over that water to get the water incorporated into the dough just really gently with my fingers. You don't want to overwork the dough because if you do, it will become tough. So the less messing with it you can do, the better. So I'm just checking to see if it's coming together. And if it's not, then I'm going to add a little more water. And I'm going to keep adding water until it's the right consistency. So now it's just about together. It's still kind of crumbly and that's okay because we want a really flaky pie crust. This is a short, what they call a short pie crust. So it's not going to be like really tough. It's going to be really, really flaky. It's getting all the bits and pieces out of the bowl now, forming it into a little bit of a ball to start with. So just make sure I get all those flour particles uh, saturated with the water without being too sticky. We don't want it to be super, super wet. I'm going to form that into a disc. I'm going to use the saran wrap to help finish pushing it together. You can see it's really crumbly right now. We're going to take this and once we've got it wrapped up, we're going to put it into the fridge and let it chill. This will let the flour hydrate and the shortening chill down so it stays cold and keeps our crust nice and flaky. Okay, so we've taken the pie dough out. I kind of let it warm up just a little bit so it'll roll easier, but I don't want it too warm because you don't want it to be too soft, okay? So what I do is I lay out a couple layers of plastic wrap to roll it out from under. All right, so we've got it sandwiched between layers of plastic wrap here. And a lot of times you see people, they do it on a floured surface. I do it between the plastic wrap like this so that I can pick it up easier and put it in the pie plate without having it break on me because this is a super, super short crust. It becomes crumbly really easily, which is why you've got to be careful with the amount of water you add. You don't want it too much water will make it too soft too little water and it'll just simply fall apart on you as you try and roll it. So here I'm rolling it part way and kind of keeping it as round as possible and then I'm just kind of stretching that plastic wrap off the top to make sure that I don't get the plastic wrap wrinkled into it. And I can actually take it if I want and flip it over, work from the other side as well, make sure I don't have any wrinkles underneath. Deep dish 
pie pan that we're going to put this in. So it's got to be bigger than the pie pan before it goes in to be able to come up on the sides. It. It's bigger than the pie plate all the way around. We are going to peel off the top layer. See what I mean? Really sharp crust. It's going to start breaking on me. That's why I keep it on here. So we're going to peel off the top layer of plastic wrap. Now, pull it over our rolling pin very gently, keeping the plastic wrap on it right over the edge of that pipe plate. Now I can take using that plastic wrap to keep it in one piece and just gently manipulate it down into the corners of the plate. And once we have it all nice and down in the corners of the plate, we can peel the rest of that plastic wrap off. Okay? Now that we have the dough in the pie plate, we're going to go ahead and trim it off right along the edge of this. This has got a pretty good lip on it and that'll give me a nice border. So I'm just kind of pushing the dough out. And it's not going to make it all the way around in all the spots, but that's okay. It's going to come pretty close. This will give me a nice little lip to keep the custard inside the pie and off the floor of the oven. Okay, now that I have cut the extra off, I'm going to save this extra dough because I can roll this back out and I can make decorations, which I can bake in a 375 oven just until they're nice and golden brown. Make little leaves, little pumpkins, whatever you want, and then you can put it on the pie after it's done cooking as a decoration for the table. So this is why you kind of hang on to a plastic wrap. I can take this lovely little piece here, kind of press it out into a disc again, wrap it back up in the plastic wrap and throw it back in the fridge till I'm ready to roll it out. Now, for the edge of the pie, I'm going to take and I'm going to fold this in half and over, creating a little ledge on the inside of the pie plate. This way, my custard has a little lip to come up against when I put it in. Because it's really easy to end up with your custard all over your pie plate, all over the bottom of your oven if it gets too hot. This helps give you that little barrier to keep it in the pie plate. I'm going to go all the way around and create this little lip first. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can. If you want to leave it just like this, you can too. This puts it right to the edge there so that when you go to cut the pie and take it out, you can get right underneath it. But if you want to make it a little fancier, you can do the two knuckle little a little fluted thing if you want. I don't like that. I like a little more rustic look to my pie. So I'm just going to make sure all my edges are nice and together, nice and smooth on the edge of the plate. And this is now ready for the custard, so let's move on to that. Okay, so to make the custard for the pumpkin pie filling, we are going to take half a teaspoon of fine salt, about a half a teaspoon of ground cloves, about a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, and a full teaspoon of ginger, and about a half a teaspoon, as I drop it, of freshly ground nutmeg. Now I keep a rasp like this in my kitchen at all times, and I always keep whole nutmeg on hand, because once you grate it, it starts losing its potency, but you can hang on to the fresh nuts and ground them at any time. This all is going to get combined into three quarters of a cup of sugar, and I use evaporated cane sugar so it's not bright white. Pardon my hands. So it's got a little bit of an amber color to it. I feel like it has a more sugar flavor, and it just, I don't know, there's a bit of flavor to everything to me. So we're gonna stir this all together right here. Now I thought I 
had enough for two pies, but then I realized that no, I actually need about 30 ounces of pumpkin for uh, or more for two pies, 32 ounces. So I have enough for one pie, which is fine. That's all I need for my family this year with COVID and everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take two whole eggs. I like to use extra large eggs. It does increase your cooking time just a little bit, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with a little longer cooking time as long as you keep an eye on it. But I like the whole eggs because it just gives it a more rich custard flavor. We got those eggs beat up a little bit. We're gonna take our fresh pumpkin puree that we made yesterday and pull that in here. Look at that. Look at how bright that is. You know when you put when you get the pumpkin out of the can, it's kind of dark. This is beautiful. Now we're gonna take and we're just gonna start whisking that into the eggs. It's gonna take a couple minutes, but we want it all nice and combined before we start adding other stuff. Once we have those eggs nicely combined with our pumpkin, we're going to go ahead and put in our sugar and spice mixture. And it should smell like pumpkin pie pretty quick here. Now you're starting to get that darker color. Because that dark color should come from your spices, not the pumpkin. That pumpkin should be bright orange. Okay, then we're going to take a can of evaporated milk. We're going to shake it up real good, like a Starbucks barista shaking up a tea. We're going to pop it with the church key on both sides because if you don't pop both sides, it will not pour. And start drizzling that milk in and stir in small increments until you get it all in there. And this is a custard. Custard basically is eggs, sugar, milk. Can't go wrong. Throw in a little vanilla. You got a vanilla custard. Add some chocolate. You got a chocolate custard. Throw in an ice cream freezer, you get ice cream. I would recommend cooking it a little bit first, though, to uh, put the eggs out so you don't uh, run the risk of getting yourself sick off raw eggs. But pumpkin this custard, yeah, pumpkin ice cream would be good. You could cook this over a double boiler for a little bit, bring it up to temperature, uh, about 120 degrees or so. Uh, make sure you get those eggs cooked through without scrambling them. You can have pumpkin ice cream. But I'd probably put whole cream in it if I did that instead of the evaporated milk. Now that I've got the can of milk in here, we're going to get it all nice and stirred to combine. And then we're going to put this into our pie shell. But I'm going to show you a little trick with that too. All right, so let me get this stuff out of the way. Let me grab our pie shell. Just chilling out in the fridge. One more thing. Ooh, that's not it. That's it. There you go. I always keep a little shaker jar of flour. Trick to keep your custard pies from totally soaking the bottom of your pie crust. Sprinkle a little bit of flour in the bottom of that pie crust before you put your custard in. Just kind of move it around. This gives something for that custard to kind of stick to and soak up other than your pie shell. Okay? So anytime I do a custard pie of any kind, I do this little trick, a little bit of, and you don't want to do a lot, just a little, just enough to kind of put a little layer on the bottom here. Now we've got our custard all nice and mixed up. Look at this. It's already looking like pie. You can see the pieces of pumpkin in there. That's going to be the beauty of having a homemade pumpkin as opposed to a canned pumpkin. You're actually going to have pumpkin. All right, now we're just going to gently pour this into the pie shell. You see why I made that little lip? This comes right up to the top of this bin. This is a nine inch deep dish pie. If you don't have a deep dish pie plate, you're gonna to wanna to get one for this recipe because it will not work with a shallower pie pan. Unless, you make... yeah, unless, you're gonna, unless you're gonna make two very short ones. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up anything that's got off the edge here. We're gonna put this in the oven to cook in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to put our pie in the oven at 450. I've got it in a convection oven, so I'm going to go for about 40 minutes. But in order to do that, let's set it up here for a second. Because I have a task here. I'm using the lower half of my oven. So first things first, we're going to put the pie on the top shelf. And I have a pizza stone that I like to keep in here to help keep the heat even. Very carefully, so as not to jiggle that filling out of the crust. We're going to put it in, slice 
it up under the lid here. I'm going to pull the bottom shelf out now because this is what you can use your shallow pie plants for. I'm going to put a regular shallow pie pan in the bottom here. I have some boiling water right here. We're going to fill that pan with the boiling water right underneath our pie. This is going to help put some steam in the oven. Let's see if I get it. So there we go. I'm going to put some steam in the oven and help that pie to cook up nicely. So in about 40 minutes, we'll check it again. Okay, while we're waiting for our pie to cook, we're going to go ahead and utilize our toaster oven that we have in order to make some decorations for the top of the pie when it comes out. It's a neat way, if you happen to have your custard crack on you, you can hide it underneath the decorations. There's nothing wrong with the custard cracking. Some people don't like it. All right, so we're going to, once again, two pieces of plastic wrap. We're going to roll this out, probably about a quarter inch-ish. Off that top layer, hopefully without tearing your dough. Now you can do this freehand with a knife. Just cut out a little leaf, make prints in it. I have these cute little leaf stamp cookie cutters. You do too. I have these cute little leaf stamp cookie cutters. So I'm going to use these. Push it in, push it down, and it imprints the dough. And I have a perfect little leaf. here. I think I'm just going to do three leaves this year. It's always good to do things when you're doing uh, decorations in groups of three. It just seems to be really appealing to the eye. Let's see if I can get this one. This is a pretty big oak leaf. Push it down. Pop it out. There we go. So now we have three little leaves. Now if I want to do a few more, I can. But I don't know. I'll think about it. I'm going to pop these in the oven in the toaster oven at like 375 just until they brown. So now that I've got them cut out, I've got two bleach leaf cut out here just in case. I'm going to take some heavy cream and I'm just going to brush the top. This is going to help it brown a little better in the oven. Like I said, we're going to do this about 375 in the toaster oven just till it browns up. But the cream is also going to do one other thing besides helping it brown giving it some pretty color. It'll be darker than the rest of the pie because of this. It'll also allow a little sparkling sugar to attach to them, giving them a little bit of, a little bit of cuteness, a little bit of sparkle. Always gotta have sparkle. Now the sugar will caramelize on the pan. That's why I've got the liner on it, but it's gonna look really pretty on decorations. Now we're going to put this in the toaster oven like I said. I love my toaster oven because it gives me a second little oven in the kitchen for those small projects. I'm going to put it on bake and I'm going to pop it up to 375. Oops, 375. There we go. And we're just going to start that. I'm going to keep an eye on it and once they get nice and brown and crispy we'll pull them out. Okay so our pie took about 50 minutes to cook. It just has a little tiny jiggle in the middle of left, not much. We don't want it to get too cooked through because it's gonna continue cooking after it gets out of the oven. This is gonna shrink down a little bit in the crust as it cools. Don't panic. If it does crack, no big deal. You've got your little crust pieces. You can decorate your pie however, cover up that crack if necessary. So, thank you so much for joining me for the very first Glamorous Life Kitchen. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And we're gonna do the brown family sugar cookie recipe. Good, way back in our family. Ta-ta!